Look at that. So crazy. I have the 907X with the 55 millimeter. That looks pretty good. I think I could keep that. I'm in Hasselblad's focus. The camera is tethered. I am going to find focus on our topmost part. I have this lens set at an f4 because this lens is very sharp at an f4. So this will be the first shot. I will set this limit here. This is the furthest away point. Focus out to that. This is towards the edge of the frame, so this is not as sharp. It's just because of the extension tubes. I will set the limit number two. I'm gonna go to a small step size and I'm just gonna hit play. We're taking 42 shots here and then we'll let the magic happen. Ten more shots. Okay, this is done. I'm just gonna kind of look at the look and see if I want to change anything about it. I think this is just looking nice and normal right off of the camera. I might just check the sharpness and just see if we want any more. Yeah, so I might keep it there, modify all of them, and I'm gonna export as TIFFs. This is the software, Helicon Focus. I'm gonna take our 42 shots and just drag them in here. And this is very cool to see it create this in this view from all of the photos. It's very satisfying. I think that's why I've become obsessed with it because I'm like, what is this thing gonna look like? This is insane. The detail in here, this is a, a crazy thing that I just like can't, I can't stop looking at it. I can see things that are not able to be seen with just the eye. I have this Boot. There's some more distance to it. I think I will make the paper be a little bit bigger. What a shoe. What a shoe. Okay, first and foremost, snap a photo. I uh, have been shooting video in 4K for so long, so to have this, which is like 10 or 11,000 pixels wide and just insanely sharp lens is crazy to me, but that's out of focus, that's out of focus just because it has a little bit more depth. I'm gonna put something small in the corner just to see how sharp the corner is. So I might bring the brightness up a little bit. Contrast, maybe. I kind of like the shadow fill brought up. Sharpness, let's see what it's like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Even right here will get sharper because there's multiple tiny little bits of focus stepping. Now we go to live view and find the tallest part of the shoe, which is right here. And then I'll go out to the furthest point and I'll just check the pencil in the very corner. And that is very sharp. That's beyond where we were. And I will start this. Okay, this is done. Sometimes I like to just check. Oh yeah, that is crisp. I think the sharpening is a little bit high, but I kind of like it because it um, creates this hyper real, crazy to look at detail. This is the point of this. At the sharpest that this lens can be, we can't get all of this in focus. Even down here, it's starting to come out. So that is why I'm doing this. I'll go back to the crop and just remove it so that we can look at this pencil later. And now it's going from far away to near which is like, I just can't get enough of watching that happen for some weird reason. And now we have this beautifully, insanely crisp photo of what the heck is that? Ah, now we have this insanely crisp photo of this little shoe, which I don't know if anyone's foot has ever been in. I don't know if it's a decoration or an actual shoe and the pencil we can see that this remains very sharp out to the corners where with the extension tubes, you kind of want your what you're working on to be in the middle. So that's why a macro lens would be helpful. But this, I just love. One other thing to note is sometimes stuff like this happens. Obviously, with all of the photos taken, there is a shot of this in focus and we can see by clicking these where it might be. Getting there, yep. You can go to retouching and I can bring that back. You can see that bringing back that part that was 
out of focus because this piece in the foreground kind of can get in the way of what's in the background. So it, it might have a little bit of a hard time doing it, but there are three methods to the rendering and you could just easily bring this in Photoshop and take one of the shots that was in focus and get it right. And we'll just see if method A changes things. If you print this out big, maybe you could see these little aspects, these little artifacts. Might have worked a little bit better. And lastly, I'll show method C. Crazy, even just like screenshotting that, for some stuff looks very interesting. Yep, for this, method C did the best, at least in this area right here. This could be interesting because it's transparent glass. I, of course, would light this in a different way from the back, definitely. Um, or have it be standing up with backlight, but we'll see for now what this looks like and how it deals with transparencies. And I wanna see if I can bring the camera a little bit closer, and I can, that's close focus. I just wanna be a little bit further than close focus, so maybe there. And level this out. I calibrated the level to the camera being just placed down on this table, because it doesn't really matter if it's level According to the world, it just matters if it's level compared to what's being captured. If it's top down like this, go back to manual focus without making this fall off. Very gentle. Okay, perfect. I think I need to fix these shadows just for my own self. There's something about that that I don't hate. Is that a little weird? Yes, but... Mm. It's kind of weird. Maybe I'll change the paper. Yeah, I'm gonna see what this looks like. Yep, the lighting is not here. If it didn't require me to move tons of stuff, I would change the lighting. And that does look good. Maybe I'll try it. Yep, we're gonna need to try that. I will reset. This is just risky business over here right now. I might keep this one small in the frame too. This is definitely better. We definitely could get the camera closer, but the last time I was in this garage, I learned if you have something that's looking good, don't f it up. Okay, I'm gonna start here. What did I just do? I'm gonna completely reset everything. I actually want to keep this in its natural form. So I'm gonna expose so that we're not blown out up top. I did like the overall exposure before the other way. Should we exposure bracket and focus bracket? That's for another time. I just want to see what recovery does here. I don't know what to do. That's actually looking pretty good, even though it's a little bit hot up there. I'm going to white balance to this and just see what happens. That is looking good too. So we have this shot here for reference, and I will white balance to the current frame. So we have this white balance for reference and this. Okay. Live view, check our focus one more time. Keep it here, sweep limit number one. Go out to the paper, check the corner. I will set the sweep limit number two right there. Get my arm off the table, hit go. Do we even want to look at this? I don't even think so. Render these, what is our sharpness looking like? Let's sharpen this a little bit. I think that's pretty good. That is looking good. A little hot, but still looking good. Start with method B. Love that. Yeah, that is insane. This is the shot that was taken. And we can see this much detail in here. This is just so crazy to me. E even with my eye, I can't see these little hairs in the paper. Crazy. This is an old bottle. It worked well with glass. I don't see any weirdness. Okay, we're doing one more. Yeah, this'll be good. Quick test shot. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe a little shadow fill. Yeah. I'm tempted to rotate this to be even, but I'm scared to touch it. Okay, I'll do it. Oh God. Okay, find close focus. I want it to be like right here. I have the extension tubes back on. I'm not gonna pull focus all the way out to here. I'm okay if it's like this. I just want the whole bottle to be in focus. And out to here. Maybe the paper beneath it? Yeah, I think that'll do. Extra small, I don't think so. Medium, one more trick. Beautiful, 
Also, this thing is tiny. This is my finger. This is a pencil. Also, I post a lot of photos from this camera and might get into posting some of this close-up stuff to Instagram, so I'll see you there as well. We didn't get all the way out there, but I am gonna be done with this. This is insane. Let's see, even though we didn't get out all the way, it should still be cool. And I know the label isn't acceptable in any terms for commercial, but this is not commercial. This is just garage vibes. The satisfying part. There is just something like each object, when I watch this happens, it's a whole new satisfying moment. Beautiful. Look at that. So crazy. We didn't get that, but that's okay. And this is with the extension tubes. Pretty dope. All right, thanks for watching.